Alright, I just bought this electrostatic powder coating machine. This is a uh, WX958. You get these on Amazon and I think uh, Eastwood used to sell them. I don't know if they sell this model anymore. I uh, get them on eBay too. Uh, they come with zero instructions, so it's all in pieces. You've got to figure out how to put this thing together. Uh, the mechanical parts are okay. I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory. you got some screws on the side here, and the plates are the proper spacing, so you know where all those go. Uh, as far as the tank and all that stuff, it's kind of self-explanatory, and the hose fittings and everything on the gun. But all these red hoses and everything, there's absolutely no instruction on where any of that stuff goes. So uh, you get on YouTube and there's a bunch of instructions, but they basically don't talk. And it's so what you want to do, I, I'd say in, initially, is figure out what everything does. And from there you can figure out where all the plumbing goes. This has got a little, like an arrowhead on it, which means the gun. Uh, this is a white cloud, which I guess means air going into the gun. And this is black cloud, which means that's going to run air into the powder coat. So the way this works is I actually have to add this gauge or this um, regulator. I, it's set at 50 pounds. Uh, 50 PSA, PSI is about right for this. And uh, add some pipe in there. So none of this comes with it. You get from the water collector here, the vapor collector, and everything else, but you don't get this part. Uh, I was going to make a little bracket to hold it there, but I came up with this ingenious system called a zip tie. And that worked out pretty good. So the air comes in here, it hits this T, which for some reason they don't put this part together. I don't know why, so you have to screw that in. It doesn't make any difference which tube goes on which fitting. One of them goes up here into this first connector, and it's actually got, it says air right on it. Inside of here, it goes to a T, which branches out to these other two gauges and to an uh, electric valve. So when you hit the trigger, it blows air through the gun. When you release the trigger, trigger it shuts this part off so it doesn't blow any more um, powder into the gun. So that's that first one. The second one here loops around and it goes into this regulator which comes with it so it goes on one side of this the other side of this goes to the bottom of the tank and what this does and you actually set this for just a couple pounds uh, you have to kind of play with it I guess but there's a false bottom in that tank and what it does is it injects air in there and it liquefies the powder so it actually the powder actually acts like liquid so then This second one here, which is labeled black cloud, goes in here. That's actually a nozzle that sprays across here, and it causes a venturi effect. Uh, this tube goes all the way down into the powder, and if you look in here, you see a little grass nozzle, and it actually blows across and causes a, a low pressure area, which pulls the powder up into this area. This one here, which is labeled white cloud, actually adds more air to this to make sure that this tube uh, has enough flow that uh, it doesn't plug up or you end up with bunches or whatever. The clear one here is labeled gun and it goes to the gun. And that blows through the tip to make sure that the tip doesn't plug. So all this, these three things right here, all they do is make sure that powder travels to the gun and to the workplace. So that's pretty self-explanatory and that really simplifies the understanding on the plumbing, uh, this tool here is just a vent. In fact, I'm actually going to cut off uh, probably about 20 inches of that. Uh, I have to cover off of this because this is all plumbed wrong. These two fittings were inverted. There was a couple in here that were wrong. Uh, the thing didn't work at all. I got that all fixed. Uh, I don't like sending things back. If they don't work right, I either fix them or re-engineer them to work. But I don't like sending stuff back. Um, but other than that, you know, and then it doesn't show you how to put this bracket on. So naturally I put it on the wrong way. It actually goes on and it actually looks upside down. But that's the way it goes so that this just hooks on there like that. Yeah, it works pretty good. And naturally, uh, none of these hoses here 
you know, you've got the, the electrostatic control wire and the trigger wire, and you've got the airflow, and then you've got the powder flow. These are all separate, and it's just a gigantic spider web. So you do what most people do. You zip tie them and tape them together so you have a nice, neat deal. Uh, I haven't written, like I said, I haven't... Uh, oh, the ground thing here, too. I haven't used it yet. So I did a little bit of checking out on some of the settings and that kind of thing. Uh, the KV, you basically want to run about 90. Uh, this you want to run 35, 40. And then these, I'm going to start out with one on all of them and ding around with it from there. Uh, if you have this one set too high, it's going to throw bunches out. So you just want to keep tweaking it till you get a nice even flow. And uh, I've got an Eastwood gun which puts out 15 or 30,000 volts. This puts out 100,000. And on the Eastwood, if I held this about here, it would arc across. This does not at all. In fact, you can get within a sixteenth of an inch and it won't arc. But if you hold it like here and you hit the trigger, your clothes will actually, you can feel the static cloud that forms around here. So I think it's going to work pretty nicely. And, and from what I've seen, uh, the unit does work quite well. Uh, it's really unfortunate they don't have any instructions. It was quite frustrating. I mean, I spent, oh, probably about four hours not only getting the plumbing right, but then finding out it wouldn't work at all. I couldn't get this gauge to do anything because the plumbing in here was backwards. But, you know, I figured it out. It, it's fine. So I'm going to put the cover back on this thing and button it up. And, uh, Probably get into the shop tomorrow. It's Monday, so I'll get in the shop tomorrow, and we'll plug it in, and I'll do a test run on it and see how it works. Uh, the the canister here holds 49 pounds of powder. I usually buy powder 25 pounds at a time, and that lasts me two years. So it'll be nice. I can put the black powder and just leave it in there instead of the other one. You know, I got the one quart jar. I got to scoop it out, spray a little bit, scoop up some more. It's a constant. Uh, hassle. So this would be much better. And then I bought a little stainless steel cup. So I'm going to be doing some chrome rims and stuff. Uh, so you just switch over. You just switch this device here to the little canister and uh, you just change. You know, you have to flush everything out with air, but still you can change back and forth and I don't have to ever uh, ding around with this thing. So we'll uh, do a little test on that. That should be in sometime this next week. And uh, we can look at that too. So stay tuned if you got questions. Let me know. Okay, a little bonus here. I thought I better check it before I put the cover on. So as you can see, I've got the gauges horizontal. That's my setting 90 and 43. And you can watch this end gauge. And I got air blowing out. And if I, yeah, it's weird, the, the static that comes off of it. So before when I triggered, this didn't move at all. This didn't move at all, it really nothing worked. So this is perfect, yeah, it's working. So, it was a success there again. Okay, pass number two is going pretty good. Uh, set these needles so they're basically horizontal. And then this one here, as you see, it just barely moves just, a, just like a, two incremental little lines there to move about that much and I'm getting a pretty decent fine mist no clumps yeah that's working real good if I crank this just a little bit more I get a little more feed that's about right yeah I'm getting a real nice even spray uh, I got no tank the, uh, the bubbler that's turned all the way off uh, still running the same here. I screwed around with that a little bit. Didn't make too much difference. I'm running 50 PSI input here. Um, yeah, this seems to be the right setting. This is working out pretty darn good. And I really like the way it covers. It, it, it does do a little bit of a spray a little block initially, but then after that it's good. So, I think we've got the thing figured out.
pretty darn good. We'll stick them in the oven to see how they come out here. Okay, this should be the final installment here, I hope. I got to thinking about this thing, and I was wondering why these two gauges were live all the time. When I pulled the trigger, only this end gauge would, um, would change, meaning there was air pressure going to it. I was thinking, you know, they should all be on the trigger, so when you hit the trigger, all the pressure gauges lift. Um, so the plumbing was definitely all wrong. So what I did is I just kind of tore it apart and started from scratch. Uh, the main inlet goes to the T, or it doesn't go to the T, it goes to the, uh, the electric uh, solenoid valve, which when you trigger the gun, this valve opens and releases pressure to all the gauges. So just knowing that, I uh, on the out, outlet side of that uh, electric valve is, is the air supply which supplies all the gauges. So once I got that all straightened out, it works great. The thing just works great. I hit the trigger, I get powder, the gauges all come live, I let go of the trigger, the pressure drops, and that's it. What was happening is my air compressor was running non-stop because there was air running through the, the hose and I think that was actually causing the powder to uh, accumulate in spots in the hose so I'd get kind of a burst of clumps and then it would straighten out. Well now it just throws a really nice mist all the time. So I think I've got it figured out. I think it's working. Uh, you know, I could have probably built this from scratch with the time I've got into it, but I'm happy now. I'm just happy it's working, and I think it'll be great. Uh, what's really nice is I've got 25 pounds of powder in there right now. It used to be with a little cup. I'd have to spray some, fill the cup, spray some more, fill the cup. I mean, I was constantly filling that cup, where now I dump the stuff in here, and I won't probably uh, have to do anything for about a year or two. So this is great. Everything's working. I've got the thing set up here on the side where it's not in the way. I've got the ground strap going over there. Nothing's in the way. Uh, it's perfect. So, that's the end of the saga of the powder coat extravaganza.